everybody. This is Janneke from Wisdom from North. I'm now recording live from the Wellbeing Festival in Norway and I'm sitting here with Lili Brendris, the famous medium and channeler here in Norway. Hello Lili, how are you? I am fine. Excellent. So you are uh, doing some talks here as yes. usual and you do that uh, every year and I've interviewed you many times. Yes. And I interviewed you last year and heard a little bit about what um, what your stark um, connections uh, were bringing forward because you ha- you're a channeler and you are channeling the Andromeda mm. galaxies. Mm. So I was wondering what kind of message do they have for us now? Because you say that you don't prepare anything, you're just showing up in the room yeah. and you see what comes. So I'm yes. curious. Yes, yes, that's always this thing that jumping on deep water. They never prepare me. It's like Okay, okay, holding on here. Now, you see, uh, I have lately had a lot of messages that has to do with the activity, the divine intervention, which allow us to open up and receive many of our multidimensional selves. So when we before talked about I'm connected to a guide that is following me, now they say you are connecting with yourself from other dimensions, from the future, sometimes from the past, and they they give it they give me an understanding like a walk-in. And before I heard about walking, somebody was dying and walking. No, 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 you don't die. But you, when, when you have a contract that I'm going to be born, being a baby, um, youth, growing up, I have my karma, I'm dealing with that. And then the contract is when, if, I do what I'm supposed to do and I come to a certain point which is within my life plan and my life plan was to be a dream bearer, my life plan was to build a bridge between worlds and help people to open up. So then at a certain point where when I were not listening they grabbed me and they created events where I was sick, I was had a burnout, and I was led to a person that was participating in, in this dream reality or my awakened state. And he... Are you talking about yourself now or yeah, generally? I, okay. I'm talking about myself. So I experienced that I awakened with a bing bag and I maybe would never have done if it wasn't this big bang because I'm a bit dramatic. So I created a scene of possibilities that, wow, I will really notice it when it happens, okay? But what I did not understand then, I understand now, that I had a walk-in in that moment. You had a walk-in? Yeah, had a walk-in. I had myself from the future that entered my being and it was like this enormous force that moved through my body and uh, it, it was so painful that I, 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 was, I was almost screaming. I said, I'm burning, I'm burning, I'm burning. So they used the, the opportunity given to me by somebody that gave me an acupuncture needle that opened the gateway. So then they could come in and enter. So it's not a possession. It's me allowing to come in. And this, let's say that you have a car crash, you have this big shock, you open up and bang, somebody comes in. So what I experienced was a change in myself. I was still Lily. I had my memory of childhood and my story but it was like that was not as strong anymore. It was more I was in the now and I was integrating new information, doing things I was not able to do before. So I was given, I was given visions and 
information that helped me to move forward. I became a wiser person, I felt. And my whole reaction pattern was more mature. From before, I was very often feeling victimized. And now I said, why did I create this to happen? And Yannick, I never read the book. I, was nev I never meditated before. I just opened. So I had to take baby steps to what, is, what, what did I experience? What is this? So I went to different workshops. I was reading books. And it started to dawn on me that, okay, something major is going on here. I guess it just came to you, like people are studying this for years and years, self-development, like I've been interviewing so many people here about how we kind of get there, even though it's not a place to get, but uh, it's like in an opening up and you just open up and you had to study about it to understand what was happening. I just find that so fascinating. Yeah, yeah it is fascinating. And, and also, as I moved on, new gifts were showered up on me because first it was the healing, then I started to write uh, through like intuitive writing and I had this beautiful old sage, my shaman that walked by my side. And then when it come to, came to a certain point, then I activated my throat chakra and the old sage started to talk through me. That was the channeling process. So this happened within a period of two, three years. And uh, then I became a ghost hunter. And uh, no, l let me say, before I became a ghost hunter, I opened up for my galactic connection. And that again was an integration of, can I believe this, everything that happened to me. And there come a point where I said, yes, this is so, this is so. We are belonging to a much greater reality. It's not that we live and we die and we come to heaven, um, but I know that I traveled through many worlds and this ability to travel, I did not have before my opening. So the one I merged with was from Andromeda, was myself 5,000 years ahead of. Right, because that was my question, because uh, I've been speaking to you before and I couldn't quite understand, I, I didn't know that she was actually coming through you. I thought she was just a guide, but you're saying that she's kind of... Have you kind of mixed consciousness with her? That is exactly correct. We mixed consciousness. Because she said that I am merging with you to help you and the earth in this time because the work that you have to do, you need more energy, more strength, you need more knowledge. And since I'm a hopeless learner, I, I oh God, left brain is like burned out. <laughs> but, but she came and she took over. And when I go into trance, for example, I, the word just flow and they give me information that I do not have access to, I haven't read about it, and I'm very often, wow, wow, I never heard that before. So she has given me a platform in which she had to feel my childhood. She had to integrate who Lily was. She couldn't take over. Lily was still there, but with this blending, a new dimension opened up, a new dimension. And this is what they tell me now is happening all over, all over. Right, because that's the interesting question for all of us, if this is not just you, but many more people. And there was this uh, one of my viewers, she sent me this beautiful picture. She showed me it first and I was like, I love it. And she said, I just saw in one of your interviews, this other aspect of you appeared. And it was this blue uh, being. And I've always loved blue, like dark blue is just my color. I just feel so connected to the galactic then when I see that blue color. And she sent it to me and it's such a beautiful picture and I put it on Instagram. And it looks like a child almost, but like round, big round face and it's not a human, but I was like, that's me. I like, I loved it. And um, it was such a big thing for me. And uh, yeah, it's kind of, I feel like it's connected to what you're saying. 
Yeah, we, uh, they say you need it now. You need that help. But it cannot be done if you do not have a certain frequency activated. So that is why they're talking about raise your frequency, meditate, move into the pattern which is necessary for us to merge. It's like wheel within wheels, and when this wheel have a certain rhythm, wow, it interlocks, it interlocks. So, not, and when I talk about frequency, it's not that you have to be as good as an angel. No, you have all your fault and you are who you are. But I, I experience in the room when I have my channelings, something happened in the room. And people come to me afterward and they say, my heart start to beat. I feel like electrical force going through my body. I have tears in my eyes. I'm touched by something. Yes, because it is like when you have reached a certain frequency, you act as a virus. And when I connect act as virus, oh. a virus it gets out there. And because what happened then, I'm, I'm mostly Lily, I connect through heightening my frequency and I'm a SAR, or there are others. But let's talk about her, not make it confusing here, then she enters me more fully and she becomes more or less me, Lily move aside and it is her energy, her words and they are so powerful, they're so vibrant and I feel such love when she come and enter me and uh, and this is what goes out, it is not Lily in the morning tired looking herself in the mirror, this is a completely different Lily on stage because she is there. Where is your consciousness then or your awareness of your old Lily when that happens? It's not there, it's blank. It's blank. It is blank. She takes over. It's Do you remember what she's saying? Are, are you yes, somewhat I aware? I remember. I am partly awake. So I remember. Thank God. I think I am a little afraid to lose control. So I, will st I still want to have <laughs> something to do with it. No, I remember, I remember. But, but since she's so much within you, can you communicate with her as well as like a separate being as well? Oh yes, I do that all the time. I do that all the time. And I do it when I sit down and meditate and I enter the field uh, which allows me to access her more, more profoundly. And uh, she, not, not all the time does she answer me. She say that, hmm, you are incarnated, you have to find your own answers, <laughs> even if I'm with you. But she kind of pushes me towards event people. I can open a book and the sentence there in the book, okay, that's the answer. So she can also work in subtle ways. And, um, it is strange because when I was a child, I felt that somehow I had parents, I loved them, but I, I didn't need them in a way. It was so strange and I felt guilty about it. I didn't call my mommy every day because I need to call my mommy. They were there as a background that took care of me. And you knew that or you just felt it? I, I felt it and it was kind of, I was not like my other girlfriends because, oh, I'm so in need of my mother and I need of my father. And it was like a very strange connection. But I know that when you are a star child, you very often feel more connected to the parents in that other world. And being a star child means that you've been um, incarnated more in other planets? Yes. Uh, my, my real homes are not planet Earth, I visit. I visit to do a job. So it is not, I love to be here, don't get me wrong, but I always have this feeling of home is somewhere else. But it's okay, I enjoy life, I, I want to live it to the fullest. So it's not, now I do not long to come back. But when I was a child, I longed for something that I did not understand what was. Because I was not conscious about it. It was just all of these strange feelings that I was living in a, in a reality show. And I was observing myself, Lily is doing this and Lily is doing that. 
And I thought that that was how everybody perceived reality. So later on, they start to show me certain events, and I said, do you remember when that happened? You remember what, when that happened? Oh, yeah, yeah. I was looking at myself like from another point of view. I think many of us have actually had some experiences when we were young, but we don't remember it. Um, and I'm wondering about that, why we don't get that information, why it's like in our subconsciousness, uh, why they don't want us to know. But uh, as you and I <laughs> have been talking about, there are many species out there uh, who have different agendas. And yeah. your guys uh, seem to be more of the high vibration type. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. There, and I have never been abducted. I have never had those experiences. It is teaching, it's teaching. And when I enter the field of memory where I'm together with them, it's always grace, wisdom and grace. And it is like an honor to be there. So it's completely, it's completely, it's, I do not call them extraterrestrial. I call them my masters, the wise ones, okay? How do they look? Do you have like a picture of them in your yeah. mind? Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely, because you, he you hear about insect beings, reptile beings. They are like us. They are like us. Very tall, very tall, with a very long neck and beautiful eyes, like very slanted eyes. Amasa reminds me of an elf. Yeah, and she is, she is very petite and still she's like two meter. So it's like a strange combination. And then the Andromedans, they are Earth-like beings. Maybe they give me that image. Maybe it's not who they look like. But in the same time, they say that the, the race of humans was seeded by us. We are human-like. There are many, many life forms, like we have fishes, we have animals, so there are many expressions of creation. But they say the humanoid form, and God created us in his picture, what does that mean? They tell me that the universe is a vibrant entity, full of love, that creates all the time. And we are that entity, there is no separation. But we came as an experiment to this earth to experience what it was to be left out of the garden. Yes, so that is part of the program. And to be really, to be really a bit crazy here, they say that you're a computer program. We see that you're a computer, a divine computer program. Uh, in what sense? In that this is a created universe, it's created realities, it's created realities and it is geared towards the, the end game of this program is that those that play the game will find utter complete love. That's the challenge, that's the challenge, that's why we live. Those who play the game, isn't the game to get out of the game in a way, to realize it's, yeah. it yes. is a game? Get out of the game, but when you find unity, when you understand that you are the puppet master and the puppet, you are both. You are creating your game and you are the game, because there yeah. is oneness. Many people are, are p painting the picture that we are the, the painter and the picture being painted. Yes, same, yeah. same thing, same thing. So, uh, last, it's, yeah. It's not a negative aspect. It's not like it's cold and feeling less. No, the, the whole, the whole, the symbolism and the creation is in the matrix of love. And then challenges come to ruin that matrix of love. Sure, we are going to attack it because it is polarity. And uh, who will win, right? It is this game. This is Game of Thrones, right? And, uh, and then when we are really touched by divinity, it's always with ecstasy and love and, and peace within. And that is the anchor, that is the, that is the reality behind it. And when we understand that, 
we can say it is a computer program. It's, it's fantastic. I created it. And in the same time, I want to experience what I created. I want to play these roles. Wow, I want to be this man. I want to be this woman. Wow. And it's, it's fantastic. But behind everything, there is love, like that's the source. <laughs> yes. And that is why I said the whole universe, all of creation, is love. Is love. It's intelligent. It creates. It, it simply is all there is. So what are they saying now is really important that we focus on? <sighs> Let go of judgment. Um, work with our shadow side. Don't run away from it, face it, accept that it is there, that's part of being incarnated, and heal your traumas, get help if you find yourself stuck in an emotion that creates like a lot of problems for you, or leave you with a feeling of less self-worth. I'm whipping myself, I'm not good enough, so love yourself, not in an ego way I'm the best but truly embrace and love what you created and you can always better what you created you can make a new stroke and a new color in your painting um, it is not about being perfect don't strive to be perfect but strive to do as best as you can and to know thyself and in order to know their self, you have to look at your shame, you have to look at your failures, you have to look at what you want to hide away. Because this is obstacles for ascension. It's obstacles for ascension. And ascension is no. You are already, they say, jumping. You are jumping from one world to another. You are in the future Earth, and you are here, and you are jumping. You are jumping. So you experience the two sides, you are already, you have already ascended in a way, but you hold on like an echo to earth and you can choose to die with your physical body and move into the new earth, or you can choose, and this is interesting, this is interesting, because I asked, because essential for me have been a mystery. And they say that there are gates being cleared. And then they showed me, 11th, the Tower of New York, where so many people died. And the horror picture of people falling out the window, crushing on the street. I was there. Yeah. And then they said they ascended before they died. They ascended. It was a mass ascension that kind of showed the way and the souls that died or ascended, they had agreed upon being in that situation. So when you see these big disasters and you feel it's so horrible, it is souls that know that we don't die. We simply ascend, we find a way. And when it is, and when it also affects so many people, that grief that opens their heart, it becomes a mass ascension, even from away from the 3,000 that die there. And it, it is like waves upon waves that affects us and open our hearts. And they, sh they have showing us the way. They're showing us the way. And oh, I should have been talking for three hours, but there are so much. But let's, let's put the basic here. And that is to prepare ourselves. And you cannot neglect who you are. You cannot neglect and lie to yourself any longer. You have to be the observer, like the puppet master. You have to see yourself and you have to embrace what you have created. And when you see, I have done this mistake again and again and again, don't judge yourself. Yes, you did it. But try to change so you don't continue create the same mistakes because you feel that was a mistake, of course, it's nothing right or wrong, but in your consciousness as a human, you will judge it as wrong. It created more heart pain for me that I did this. Okay, because the end result is that that heartache, that pain made you grow because that's the choice. If you take the choice, what did I learn from it? And you learn empathy because you are not above pain 
and I can understand other people's pain. I can move into that pain and I can help heal pain for other people because I have the recipe of how to heal it, how to work with it. And the beings that I'm connected with, they say, we have the blueprint, we got it. We have been where you are, we made it as you will make it, but you have to do it yourself. Yeah. That's a paradox of time. <laughs> yes, that's a paradox. But then again they say, there is divine intervention. There is divine intervention. They don't quite explain what it is. You're actually saying the same thing that uh, Neil Donald Walsh had just interviewed him. He's written his fourth book now and it's called Awaken the Species. And there it's about uh, learning and be being inspired by uh, what he called highly evolved beings like Hebs. And that's the extraterrestrials or intraterrestrials or what you want yes. to call it. Yes, yes. So he's speaking about the same. Uh, and I believe that it's, um, we, yeah, we can be inspired and if we just open up to uh, that, that kind of consciousness. Um, and I want to mention also that what you said about the Twin Towers, because I interviewed uh, a woman called Bonnie McEnany, I think she was called, and she wrote a book about a lot of people who died uh, in the towers and uh, 200 people she interviewed and uh, the family members and friends of those who have died they reported that those who died they it seemed like they knew they were going to die like they were talking about that no i won't go in that wedding because i won't be here or you know i i want to live through christmas like there were so many people knowing they just knew they wouldn't be here like past september and I just that um, yeah touched my heart when you were speaking about that. Yeah. And you know, my son was there 14 days before, and uh, he took a choice when he was younger because if he had taken that job for this English company, he would have been in the tower, and he said no to that job and moved back to Norway. And. Uh, I had this dream about 11th of September, didn't understand what I was dreaming about. Before? Yeah, 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 yeah. Many years before. But I did not, even when that, it happened, I did not connect it. I did not connect it. I did it many years later, but let's take that another time. I think we have, have used our time. Yes, don't? I think yes, so yes. too. But thank you so much. Thank you for your wisdom and for sharing it. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much for watching. Much light from the Wellbeing Festival.